Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Got Tommy and Randy here. Uh, today, we're going to be getting in a little deeper into the Noahide laws and who, where they came from. Um, not just the laws themselves, but the people that put them in, in place, where they came from. But before we get into that, we are going to go to the, through the Ten Commandments really quick. Um, Exodus chapter 20. I'll do the first four, and Randy can do the last six. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Amen. You know, Tommy, uh, remember and honor are right beside one another. It's like a hinge, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, let me repeat, uh, we had a gentleman where I th said uh, I was going ahead of myself on the thou shall not reading, and uh, we are humans. We make mistakes at times, you know, uh, they're not on purpose, you know, but we're going to go over this real slow for this gentleman so he can share this video with people that want to search for truth to get to know Jesus. So Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, honor, honor, let me repeat that, honor thy father and thy mother. Boy, Tommy, do you think that that's held today? Honor thy father and thy mother. No, we don't even know who a father and mother is today, do we? No, a lot yeah. of a lot of children's fathers and mothers are their phones and their their electronic devices. Right. What about transgender? Oh, a man yeah. being a woman and a woman being a man. It says honor thy father and thy mother. We don't even have mothers today, mm -mm. Uh, or that's what they're teaching in school. Amen. Yep. So honor thy father and thy mother. Now, why? That the days may be long upon the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Notice it's not the government that giveth thee. It's the Lord thy God giveth thee. And it says that your days may be long upon that land. If you do what? If you honor your mother and your father. Right. Wow. Hmm. Now let's get into the thou shall nots, Tommy. And I always like to think of them as thy shall when you have the love of Christ in your heart. Amen. Yes. Thou shall not kill. Hmm. I wonder how that goes with Planned Parenthood. Yeah. They'd be out of business. Thou shall not commit adultery. Boy, I could go on that one. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, our president has committed adultery interesting never did for never has forgiven i'm talking about uh, gasoline joe <laughs> the selected president yeah. not the elected and his adulterous wife they've committed adultery tommy she was married i'm not going to go into farther never repented devout catholic mm. god bless maybe we're john the baptist crying in the wilderness repent yep amen thou shall not steal Mm, man do you know any politicians tommy that have you know that steal from other governments oh yeah a lot of them mm. a lot of organizations too mm. like how black about, lives matter how about stealing that offering plate mm -hmm. to buy those big mansions 
Huh? Yep. We never talk about that, do we? No. We always want the poor individual that's starving to death. You know what I mean? Yes, Kitty. Yes, Kitty. You know about thou shalt not steal, don't you, Kitty? Exodus 20, 16. Thou shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. He's good, Tommy. Thou shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Now, Tommy, do you think what I just said bear false witness against any anybody that I just talked about? No. No, it's true. It's true. You know, hard to handle, but it's true. Exodus 20, and you know, you can be repentant. Amen. But only through the love of God through his son Jesus Christ. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Wow. Hmm. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Whoa. Nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, hmm. nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Amen. May God add a blessing to these through his son, Jesus Christ, who kept them perfectly. Amen, Tommy? Yep. Amen. All right. So we're going to get into the study and uh, I'm going to pull up our channel here and we did a video a week or two ago on the Noahide laws here, and uh, I'm not going to play it, just showing you what it is. This goes over the seven laws that the Babylonian Talmudic Jews had our president enforce over here. Basically, if you break any of these seven laws, you'll have your head chopped off. So um, I want to get into the group of people that promoted this and push this to be passed in the United States. And um, there are many historians today that know the history of Khazar, or Khazar, however you want to pronounce it. But the Jews, they claim that they are not from these group of people, but they do know the history very well. But we're going to get into the book, The 13th Tribe, and this is by Arthur Kessler. And um, this basically goes over the history of the Kazarian Jew. And this is a 1976 book by Arthur Kessler, in which the author advances the thesis that the Ashkenazi Jews are not descended from the historical Israelites of antiquity, but from Khazars or Khazars, a Turkish people. Kessler hypothesized that the Khazars, who may have converted to Judaism in the 8th century, migrated westwards into Eastern Europe in the 12th and 13th centuries when the Khazar Empire was collapsing. So uh, this is a very interesting book. I haven't been all the way through it yet, but uh, just to give you a little bit of what it's, uh, a little bit more of what it's about, right here in the contents, Kessler advances the thesis that Ashkenazi, Ashkenazi Jews are not descended from historical Israelites of antiquity, but from Khazar's Turkish people originating uh, in a popular in or originating in and populating in an, an empire north of between the Black Sea and Caspian Sea. Kessler's hypothesis is that the Khazars, who converted to Judaism in the eighth century, migrated westwards into current Eastern Europe, primarily Ukraine. Hmm, what's going on in Ukraine over well, there? Uh, yeah. You know, and uh, who's their president? You know, who's their president? He's what? Yeah, Jew. Jew. Uh, uh, I, we didn't go to the synagogue of Satan, Tommy. The scripture of why we're talking about. Oh yeah, this. yeah, I can go there real quick. Okay. Yeah, and then I'll go back. I apologize, Tommy. Maybe, no, you're good. Because we want to look at this. Uh, the show that this is coming from your Bible. Yeah. Amen. Believe this Revelation chapter two and chapter three, yeah, verse two, nine. nine and three eight. I'll let you. Yeah. This is, these two verses right here. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say that they are Jews and are not, but are uh, the synagogue of Satan. Wow. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which they say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Now, this is very interesting. They do lie. They do I'm going to get to what a liar is in a second. Behold, I will make them come to worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Okay, so now I want to get into what a liar is in the... So keep in mind, they lie. Let's see what a liar is in the Bible. There's 13 verses on it. The main ones I want to get to are the in the epistles of John. And this is 
Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Randy, do the, the Jews over in Israel today, do they believe in the Son of God? No. So then they would be liars, right? Right. No, hmm. they don't believe that Jesus was truly the Son of God. Um, the Son of God, no. And so do they, and, but they believe in the Father. But what does that scripture say? He that believeth, uh, the denieth that Jesus is the Christ, he is an antichrist or in place of Christ. He, and that means that he denies the father and the son, because if you don't have a son, you can't have a father. Yeah, correct. And even he that saith, I know him and keepeth not his, his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Mm -hmm. So how can they keep his commandments if they're putting their own commandments in place? And there, there's only, there's seven of them, not 10. Right. And what if they're a liar? They're breaking. If you break one, you break them all. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Mm -hmm. Remember, that's breaking a commandment. You're lying. Yep. Uh, he that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. Randy, do we believe on the Son of God? Yes, amen. Yes, we do. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not that uh, the record that God gave of his Son. Mm. 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 So they killed the Son of God, and then they want to uh, deny the Son of God today, and then they want to claim to be God's chosen people. What a deception. That's interesting, yeah. Very interesting. All they had to do is inherit the name, the Jews, yes. even though the word Jew never was in the bio judean judean you know that word was changed i wonder who changed it interesting so um yeah the Khazar empire was collapsing at the end of the books uh last chapter kessler summarizes its content and his intentions as follows in part one of this book i have attempted to trace the history of the Khazar empire based on the scant existing sources in part two chapters five through seven i have compiled the historical evidence which indicates that the bulk of history jewry and hence the war or hence of world jewry is of Khazar or turkish rather than semitic origin in the last chapter i tried to show that the evidence from anthropology concurs with history and refuting the popular belief in a jewish race descended from the biblical tribe so I will have a PDF of this in the description below. And uh, I also want to get into another book that Randy and I are both going through. And it was very interesting that, uh, and I'll pull up the, the PDF of the book. I do want to go through and read this part right here. Uh, I do think here, here's a map of where Kazar was located. Here's the Black Sea. Um, and, and this was over in like the southwestern part of Russia and around where Ukraine is and Hungary. Uh, and then Poland would be over in here, I believe. But I do want to read up here and get to where uh, they migrated to. This book traces the history of the ancient Khazar Empire, a major but almost forgotten power in Eastern Europe, which in the Dark Ages became converted to Judaism. Khazaria was finally wiped out by the forces of Genghis Khan, but evidences indicate, or evidence indicates that the Khazars themselves migrated to Poland and formed the cradle of Western Jewry. The Khazars' sway extended from the Black Sea to the Caspian, from the Caucasus to the Volga, and they were instrumental in stopping the Muslim onslaught by Byzantium. The Eastern Jaw, the gigantic Prinzer movement that in the in the West swept across northern northern Africa and into Spain. Keep that in mind. They went into Spain. OK, in the second part of this book, The Heritage, Mr. Kessler speculates about the ultimate faith of the Khazars and their impact on the racial composition and social heritage of modern Jewry. He produces a large body of meticulously. Uh, detailed research in support of a theory that sounds all the more convincing for the restraint with which it is advanced. You should, or yet should this theory be confirmed, the term anti-Semitism would become void of meaning since, as Mr. Kessler writes, it is based on a misapprehension shared by both the killers and their victims. Mm -hmm. The story of the Khazar Empire as it slowly emerges from the past, begins to look like the most cruel hoax which history has ever perpetuated or, or perpetrated. So now I do want to um, cover this. So if the what we the so-called Jews today actually came from Eastern Europe, they would be white people, right? But they do not claim to be white. They actually hate white and black people. Uh, and then if you want to speak against them, they want to call you racist or anti-Semitic, which they're not 
Semitic. So, I mean, you can't be anti-Semitic to someone who's not Semitic, but, um, you know, whatever. But this is a very interesting book. Uh, I will put a PDF of this in the description. And uh, now I did tell you, keep in mind the word Spain here. And another book that Randy and I are going through, I am going to pull that up real quick. My photos here. And this, I, I took pictures of the book that Randy and I are going through. And I am going to, uh, th the name of this book is actually called the deliberate destruction of America and the world and who's doing it and why. And this is by Dr. Lorraine Day. This is very interesting. I would urge um, you to buy this book and read through it. It is, it is very, very eye-opening. But I am going to go through and read quite a bit from this book. So uh, the Jews own and run the Catholic Church. And this says the Tribunal of the Holy Office of the Inquisition, commonly known as the Spanish Inquisition, was established in 1478 by Catholic monarchs Ferdinand II and of Aragon and Isabella I of Castile. It was intended to maintain Catholic orthodoxy in their kingdoms and to replace the medieval Inquisition, uh, which was under papal control. The Inquisition was originally intended in large part to ensure the orthodoxy of those who converted from Judaism and Islam. This regulation of the faith of the newly converted was intensified after the royal decrees issued in 1492 and 1501, ordering Jews and Muslims to convert or leave Spain. So to keep in mind, they were in Spain. Various motives have been proposed for the monarch's decision to uh, found the Inquisition, such as increasing political authority, weakening opposition, suppressing conversos, conversos profiting from confiscation of the property of convicted heretics, reducing social tensions, and protecting the kingdom from the danger of a fifth column. The Spanish Inquisition is often cited in literature and history as an example of Catholic intolerance and repression. Although records are incomplete, estimates of the number of persons charged with crimes by the Inquisition range up to 150,000, with 2,000 to 5,000 persons executed. Thus, the monarchs managed to gain control over the church, but the chief threat of heresy was to proceed from the Jewish converts, crypto-Jews, known as conversos or Moranos, literally meaning swine. Mm. Jews who pretended to convert to Catholicism, Jews who became part of an inter international plot to subvert the Catholic Church and Catholic governments, and the Jesuit order. A lot of people like to talk about the Jesuits, don't they, Randy? Yes, they do. It's All one right. of their favorite topics over in Washington, D.C. Oh, yes. You know, and you don't believe me, go there and look at some of the temples that they build in honor of them. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, so all for you Jesuit, you know, people that really like to dig into the history of the Jesuits, we're about to get into it. So the one, go ahead, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Uh, and, and I'm going to let you read the first line, by the way, if you're into the NCAA basketball, uh, deal, uh, Loyola university is a Jesuit university. Go ahead, Tommy. Yeah. Uh, so the Jew, Jew Jesuit order of the Catholic church, this, the first Jesuits were crypto Jews, Ignatius Loyola himself was a crypto Jew of the occult Kabbalah. Mm -hmm. A crypto Jew is a Jew who converts to another religion and outwardly embraces the new religion while secretly maintaining Jewish practices. As John Toro explains in 1491, uh, San Ignacio de Loyola was born in the Basque province of Guapazaco, Spain. Uh, his parents were Moranos, and at the time of his birth, the family was very wealthy. As a young man, he became a member of the Jewish Illuminati order in Spain. As a cover for his crypto-Jewish activities, he became very active as a Roman Catholic. Mm. It's interesting. Mm. On May 20th, 1521, Ignatius, uh, or as he was now called, was wounded in battle and became a semi-cripple, unable to succeed in military and political arena. He started a quest for holiness and eventually ended up in Paris, where he studied for the priesthood. In 1539, he had moved to Rome, where he, where he ended up... Okay, hold on. He had moved to Rome, where he founded the Jesuit order, which was to become the most vile bloody and persecuting order in the roman catholic church would you repeat that again Tommy, yeah sure so people understand yes. that 
So in, in 1539, he had moved to Rome where he had founded the Jesuit order, which was to become the most vile, bloody, and persecuting order in the Roman Catholic Church. Mm. In 1540, the current Pope Paul III approved the order at Loyola's death in 1556, there were more than 1,000 members in the Jesuit order located in a number of nations. Do you think they're located in China? Oh, yeah. Everywhere. How about the Ukraine? Oh, sure. How about Russia? Mm -hmm. How about the United States? <laughs> yeah, I think they're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much in it. I mean, I really do want to just go through and read all of this to you. Uh, uh, but I think Randy has a lot he wants to touch on. Or Randy, you want me to keep going? What do you want me to do? Keep going. And, All right. And maybe I, we can add a little bit. After Let me done see going. how much is left. So there's just, what, three more pages. So Ignatius Loyola's secretary, Planco, was of Jewish descent also and was the only person present at Loyola's deathbed. James Lanez, who seceded... Loyola, as a second Jesuit general, was also of Jewish descent. Jews were attracted to the Jesuit order and joined in large numbers. Emmanuel de Lacanza was no exception. He was a Jew, which explains why he introduced the eschatological teaching of a return to the Jewish animal sacrifices during the millennium. Emmanuel de Lacanza promoted the writings of 16th century Jew, uh, Jesuit priest Francisco Ribera, developing a futuristic perspective that restricted the prophetic fulfillments in the book of Revelation to the end of the world. Lacunza also wrote that during a millennium after the tribulation, the Jewish animal sacrifices would be reinstated along with the Eucharist or the mass of the Catholic Church. Lacunza followed after Jewish fables and replaced the commandments of God with the commandments of men. Mm. Hmm, we see that today in the Noahide laws, don't we? Yes. And uh, the Breckenridge bill, the Breckenridge bill and yeah. the commandments have been changed by Catholicism. Yes, they have. it hasn't been changed by God. Has it Tom? No, no. Okay. That doctrine gives the Jew, uh, Jew, uh, the Jews primacy in God's plan and regulates Christians to a prophetic, uh, parenthetical, to be supplanted by the Jews during the thousand-year earthly reign of Christ, according to Catholic false doctrine. Anyone who has been involved in truth-seeking for some time now is sure to have come across the people who would try to convince you that the Jesuit order, or aka Society of Jesus, is really at the top of this world's crime network and not the Jewish Rothschilds from the city of London. These people will relentlessly and tirelessly attempt to fill your head with ideas that the Jesuits of Rome really run the show from behind the scenes and that everything else is disinformation. This theory seems to have become more popular and far reaching on the internet. And you will see more and more people parroting this stuff loud and clear to anyone who will listen. But since the Jesuits are actually crypto Jews, it would still mean that the Jews are and always have been behind this global criminal cabal. Mm. Mm. The Jesuit order is in reality a Jewish order masquerading as a Catholic one as a cover. So even if they were at the top, it's still a Jewish conspiracy. We Jesuits take pleasure in admitting those of Jewish ancestry. J. Natal Mori, uh, an, an excellent resource documenting all the so-called Jesuits who are really Jews turned Catholic, hence crypto Jews, can be found at jewishjesuits.com wow tell me you think we could go you think sure yeah go you go there, there real quick Ju yeah jewishjesuits.com that sounds like a dating site doesn't it Tom? <laughs> you know jewishjesuits.com uh i wonder uh i'm sure they do have uh, their own they dating probably sites. have their own dating site we're going to talk about them who they date you know what i mean on their jewishjesuits.com we're hoping that if you are a jewish jesuit that you will repent and come to jesus christ as your savior Amen. Through the mercy and the grace of the Father. Amen. Don't stay in that Satanatic institution. Go ahead, Tom. JewishJesuits.com. What a, uh, that's an easy one to remember, in Tommy? Yes, it is. Oh, wow. No, oh, what's happening here? Looks like somebody's hijacked the site, Tommy. Hmm. Let me see. Maybe it's Jewish Jesuit with no S. 
Wow. Yeah, they probably took it down, Tommy, because it exposed it. You know, I wonder if ducks to go. But anyway, we can, you know, that'll be an interesting search. JewishJesuits.com. Yeah, if you all can search uh, JewishJesuits.com, uh, you know, please let us know what you find. Let's see, JewishJesuits.com. Yep. Okay. The Jew Jesuit order in its founding was very much Jewish. All five of its founding members were Murano Jews, uh, Jew Jews masquerading as Christians. Ignatius Loyola, founder of the Jesuit order, Jewish. Alfonso Salmarin, Jewish. Diego Lanez, Jewish. Nicholas Badia, Jewish. And Semio Rodriguez, Jewish. Again, Moranos are Spanish Jews who outwardly converted to a different religion, oftentimes Roman Catholic, in order to evade persecution and expulsion for their treacherous, treacherous actions while secretly maintaining the religion of Judaism as well as practicing the Kabbalah, Jewish mysticism. It's quite funny how the promoters of the Jesuits run it all uh, run it all theories conveniently fall to mention or fail to mention these important facts and attempt to project the jesuits as purely roman catholic the very, jews just got or go ahead. Amen. very interesting tommy yeah you know they're using the roman catholicism as a cloak or a disguise for their di diabolic murder sessions tommy yes the jews disguise themselves as the religion of their enemies continue with their their treachery under the this false guise and then get everyone to blame their disguise for the world's problems. Ingenious. Wow. Now, it, it, well, I guess I'll just go ahead and keep reading. We just have two pages left. How about the Pope wears a yarmulke? <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's see that one. You know, yeah. I mean, people like pictures. Pictures say a thousand words. Oh, yeah. Don't they, Tommy? So the Jewish infiltration of the Vatican stems back many hundreds of years, and it would be safe to say that the Jews have a strong vice grip over that institution. From the inside out, one of the most blatant examples of Jewishness uh, of the Vatican is the fact that Pope, the Pope himself wears a yarmulke. You think we could get a picture of that? Yeah. You know, uh, that'd be interesting, wouldn't it, Tommy? Yes. Where's the yarmulke, you know, on there? So hmm. I wonder who else wears the yarmulke. I wonder if anybody wears the yarmulke in Washington, D.C. Huh? Let's see. Pope wears a yarmulke. Let's see if Google hadn't took that down. Oh, there it is. Oh, wow. Wow, my goodness. It looks like a beanie cap. Uh, one of those that put a spinner on top. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. then, I remember that one with little, the spinner. With the little repel yeah, propeller. The propeller. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. My good. Look at that. Look, there he is there with the yarmulke on, yeah. smiling. See him? Huh. That's interesting, isn't it, Tommy? Interesting. Yep. All right. So then now, is that, or go ahead. We we no, got go it. ahead. I'll just I'll leave it at that. All right. There's a lot of yarmulke wearing here, Tommy, isn't it? Yes, it uh -huh. is. So, agent of Israel. There are multiple instances where Israel and Jews have attempted to demonize the Vatican when they are cooperative. Uh, they aren't cooperative or sub subservient to their will. One example is the Jewish controlled mass media going on a, a massive demoralization cam campaign against Catholic priests or Jesuits uh, with uh, accusations of pedophilia and Satanism. While some of these accusations have been proven to be true, many of these claims could easily be embellished or fabricated for the Jewish controlled mass media when the Vatican does something the Jews don't like. For instance, when the Vatican strongly opposed the Iraq war. Hmm. And who's to say that these pedophiles and Satanists in the Catholic Church aren't just crypto Jews or operating under their influence? Furthermore, the man who made many of those accusations was F.R. Malachi Martin. Yeah, that's an interesting book to read, too, that he puts out about Malachi Martin. Go ahead, Tommy. Uh, who is an ex-Jesuit Zionist who, during the Second Vatican Council, drafted the document that exonerated the Jews from uh, culpability in the execution of jesus christ so it appears that the man who wrote uh, who, who writes books claiming the catholic church is full of pedophiles and satanists uh 
is a Zionist who exonerates the Jews for murdering Jesus. Yeah, that is interesting. Okay, this short synopsis of the Jewish Kabbalah. The Kabbalah and the Talmud are the two holiest books of Judaism. The Kabbalah is a book of sex magic, mysticism, and Jewish supremacy. A short synopsis of the Jewish Kabbalah is this, which sounds like it comes from Satanism. At the time of creation, the God of creation became confused and depressed and withdrew himself into himself. The part of him that makes up the Messiah essence fell from heaven into the bottomless pit where it took the form of the holy serpent. Mm. Wow. Another part of him, which is the female part called Sophia, is in charge of wisdom. Mm. When Moses went up into the mountain to meet God, the Kabbalah states that it really... In reality, Moses met the evil part of God, while the 70 elders at the foot of the mountain met the good part of God. This, they say, is how they received the beginning of the Kabbalah. They teach that the holy serpent is held captive in the bottomless abyss, and there are two ways to bring him out and up to the earth, to make all people on earth good and to make all people on earth totally evil. The Kabbalist or Kabbalistic leadership under Solomon decided that it was easier to make people evil than good. So they chose that they call the low road. Or, hold on. So they chose what they call the low road. If they can pervert all people on earth and make them sin and break every commandment that is found in the five books of Moses, that will open the legal road for the Holy Serpent to escape out of the bottomless pit and arrive as the Messiah on earth in the form of the Holy Serpent. That's interesting because uh, Revelation talks a lot about uh, someone appearing, pretending to be Jesus. Amen. At the bottomless pit. Yeah. Do you want to, you have a little bit more to read there, Tommy, or do you want to? Oh, yeah. I was going to go ahead and finish this page. This page is the, the end of what I was wanting to cover. Go ahead. Okay. However, the only people that are this Messiah is going to say will be Jewish. Since all other people do not have a soul but are animals or beasts, the more of Kabbalistic Jew can the more a Kabbalistic Jew can sin and lead others into sin, the greater he is serving God. Wow. wow. This is the essence of Jewishness, absurd, nonsensical bladder or blabber uh, at its worst. It's hard to get more it's hard to get more twisted than that. Okay. It is a hidden truth that Jews own and run the Catholic Church through the Jesuit order. The Illuminati order was not invented until Adam Washop, um, but rather renewed and reformed. The first known Illuminati order, uh, Alambrado, was founded in 1492 by Spanish Jews called Moranos, who were also known as crypto Jews. With violent persecution in Spain and Portugal beginning in 1391, hundreds of thousands of Jews had been forced to convert to the faith of the Roman Catholic Church. Publicly, they were now Roman Catholics, but secretly they practiced Judaism, including, uh, including following the Talmud and the Kabbalah. The Moranos were able to teach their children secretly about Judaism as written in the Talmud and the Kabbalah, and this huge group of Jews had sur has survived to this very day. After 1540, many Moranos opted to flee to England, Holland, France, Ottoman Empire, or Turkey, Brazil, and other places in South and Central America. The Moranos kept strong family ties, and they became very wealthy and influential in the nations where they lived. But as is the custom of all Jewish people, it did not matter in what nation they lived, their loyalty was to themselves and Judaism. As stated above in 1491, San Ignacio de Loyola was born in the Basque province of that word in Spain. His parents were Moranos, and at the time of his birth, the family was very wealthy. As a young man, he became very active as a Roman Catholic. On May 20th, 1521, Ign Ignatius, uh, as a Jew is now called, was wounded in battle and became a semi-cripple, unable to secede. Uh, in the military and political arena, he started a quest for holiness and eventually ended up in Paris where he studied, studied for the priesthood. And I think it feels like I've already read this, but I'll go ahead and read it again. In 1539, he had moved to Rome where he founded the Jesuit order, which was to become the most vile, bloody, persecuting order in the Roman Catholic Church. In 1540, the current Pope Paul III approved the order at Loyola's death. In 1556, there were more than 1,000 members in the Jesuit order located in a number of nations. Setting up the Jesuit order, 
Jew, Ignatius Loyola, devised an elaborate spy system so that no one in the order was safe. If there was any opposition, death would come swiftly. The Jesuit order now not only became a destructive arm of the Roman Catholic Church, it also developed into a secret intelligence service. While the popes relied more and more on the Jesuits, they were unaware that the hardcore leadership were Jewish and that these Jews held membership in the Illuminati order that despised and hated the Roman Catholic Church. Tommy, it sounds like uh, Giselle Maxwell and what was the other one uh, with her? Epstein. Yeah, Epstein. Wasn't he a Jew, a false Jew, a Kabbalah Jew? Yes. Setting up political leaders and sexual acts? Yes. Interesting, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, did you get done, Tommy? Uh, yeah, and I do have a, uh, just one other picture. Now, Randy and I seem to believe that the 10 toes of the statue in the image of uh, uh, Daniel chapter two is the 10 toes are future. Now, many people think that those are the Germanic tribes uh, that the papacy, they uprooted three horns and all that, but the, the Bible does not talk about three toes being chopped off. So now the verse that leads us to believe that these are still future is Revelation 17, 12. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as of yet. Now, John did write this, you know, almost 2,000 years ago. And you could say, well, at the time he wrote this, they didn't receive their kingdoms yet. And then about three or four centuries later, they did. Well, that'd be a good argument. But the, the rest of this, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. So those, those Germanic tribes that were up, or all ten of them, they they've had their kingdoms longer than one hour with the beast right. and you know tommy uh, uh you might want to do this type in picture 10 uh and i i had this article uh if you're looking at uh what's going on uh with the war there are 10 nations that are embargoing uh, uh this war with uh oh i always get it uh uh, this semi-war that's going on with Russia and uh, uh, the country that they're invading. And if you go in and type in uh, the 10 nations that are embargoing Russia, you know, mm -hmm. they're 10 kingdoms. You mean try they just haven't come to go, yeah, just do a Google search. I could have had that brought up, uh, put uh, embargo Russia, 10, 10 nations. I uh, just want to bring this up to the people that this is happening in front of them uh let's see pictures uh, is it is it basically what i have pulled up these these are the 10 different no, no. Okay. they uh they had uh you had the united kingdom but it's basically that uh it just showed that they're in putting an embargo uh on russia 10 nations they're hurting them financially mm -hmm. in every way possible to bring in the new world order, order. yeah they haven't come together yet but they will for one hour. One hour, what is 15 days in the Bible? One hour, take I think it's a month. I think it's 30. A half hour is 15 days. I thought it was 15, yeah, 15 days. But okay, they, in other words, they're only going to rule for a very short amount of time. Mm -hmm. It will not be long when they come together. And then Jesus will come back. Yes. And they will be destroyed, their kingdom. But interesting, yeah. And you're seeing the 10 kingdoms right there. Uh, Central Asia, Latin America. Notice that, that the borders, North America and South America, are completely open. Canada and and Mexico were all one region. Mm -hmm. And what's Joe Biden doing with the borders? Yeah, he's opening them up. Now, Canada hasn't put their fences down yet, but that looks like it's coming. Oh, yeah. Now, one thing I, I did think was a little different is over here where all this is green, I did think that Mexico was going to be involved in this number six yeah, yeah it, Latin America. yeah i do believe that this border is being opened just so mexico can be right part of the first kingdom uh now i don't know if these numbers are correct or whatever but i do believe that the western europe the united kingdom is going to be the helm of all of this right in a uh an interesting point too you know we talk about gas prices today which i don't care whether they go up to a hundred dollars five dollars uh, whatever but there are people on the texas border that are going across the border and gas is cheaper in mexico than is the united states so they're going across the border to get gas and bring it across because it's cheaper huh and we're losing all of that money all that money yep you know anyway good point
All right, Rand, you got anything you want to, I know you have quite a bit you want to share. Yeah, can you pull up, we're going to talk about uh, U.S. US elitist and celebrities promoting cannibalism, which goes with the cabal and goes with the false Jew of synagogue. Could you pull up Marina uh, Blavosky? Abramovic, I call her Abramovic, oh, A-B-R-A-M-O-V-I-C. How do you spell her first name? Uh, M-A-R-I-N-A. And you might want to, if you're listening at home, pull this up yourself. And I, we just want to connect a little bit of this so you're seeing it. Yeah, there she is. And I think she has a picture with a snake, Tommy. If you scroll down somewhere, uh, you can see right. Anyway, in the book, we have a picture with her with a snake when you're talking about a serpent. Wait, right there. See it right here? Hold on. That one? Right there. Right there. Click on that. Notice what she's with, right? She's with a snake. Notice she has a Hollywood artist behind her. You might want to, I'm going to read a few things uh, for you to look at this individual herself. Uh, Marina Abramovic in spirit cooking, claiming to be an artist rather than the Satanist that she is. Marina Abramovic first became an object of fascination during the final days of the 2016 election when the WikiLeaks dump of emails from Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman, John Podesta revealed a reference to spirit cooking dinner with Obramovic. According to the artist William Boot, B-O-O-T, Marina Abramovic was educated in Belgrade, Siberia, uh, Siberia. Her parents were communists who served in the military. She grew up with communist, socialist, Marx, Mar Marxist ideology permeating her home environment and influencing her thinking extensively. Her parents were probably Jews, we call it the synagogue of Satan, masquerading behind Christian orthodoxy, concealing who they really were. Now, I'm just going to give you a few points here I think you might want to look at. Historically documented, secular Jews will publicly convert to anything in any religion in order to escape persecution or death. They have no qualms about concealing their true identity while they resume covert activities against society. Often they will prevent, but pre pretend to convert to the Catholic Church, which we just saw that historically. Okay. No artist, let me repeat this today, no artist will be successful, fame, status, or wealth in this world unless they sell out and follow the Jewish satanic agenda that controls art, culture, and indeed the whole world system. Let me reread that again. No artist will be successful. Is uh, Let me see. Joe Biden's son, is he successful? Yes. Is he an artist? No. Well, no. No, no artist will be successful, fame, status, or wealth in this world unless they sell out and follow the Jewish satanic agenda that controls art, culture, and indeed the whole world system. Amen. And who does that? The whole world system. All the world will wonder after what? The beast, the new world order. And who controls that? Mm -hmm. Satan. The false Jew. Yeah, yeah, the false Jew, yeah. The synagogue of Satan. Now, notice this. Communism. And we hear a lot about Antifa, their communist organization, right? How did they spring up? Communism and the five-pointed red star are synonymous with the occult of the Talmudic Judaism and the so-called five-pointed star of David that has nothing to do with King David, but is in fact the same as the Satanic five-pointed star used in witchcraft rituals. There is no distinction between them. They are one and the same. You might want to put that, Tommy, let them take a look at the five, look at the snakes in there in her eye, the five-pointed star of David, just for individuals to look at. It's imperative to for the reader or the listener to understand, otherwise, Abramovic's art doesn't make sense. Her performance art is meant to cover up the emptiness at the heart of it. The goal is to make it appear profound when, in fact, it is empty and an insult to intelligence. Her art is totally rid riddled with hidden to the uninitiated spiritual terms, slogans, and symbols, and presented as a satanic ritual to the deluded and the unsuspecting. 
Um, her art is, is not art, but actually concealed ritual worship of Satan. And who was involved in her art? Hillary Rodden Clinton, John Podesta, Bill Clinton. It is total witchcraft and absolutely diabolical. Art is being totally uh, degenerated and made filthy and ugly. The self-proclaimed witch is not an artist. She is a magician performing occult ceremonies and getting wealthy while doing it. This is what Satan does with all his followers, turns wholesome into degenerate. Marina Abramovic may also be mind-controlled slave and duped to the elite who control this world from the shadows. She is simply promoting their occult agenda in order to subvert the morality of the masses. Now, I'm going to switch to communism, Judaism, and Satanism. Wow, the Trinity mm -hmm. have always promoted man as God. Wow. Always promoted man as God. Abramovic's most disgusting art is the promotion of cannibalism and making life-size human-looking bodies out of food. It's pretty freaking sick. Yeah. That show bright red like blood when they are cut open. She is the delight of Hollywood superstars. And the Satanatic elite and is often hired by celebrities to provide the food for massive dinner parties. Often the center of the tables is decorated with facsimiles of dismembered bodies of babies. Wonder Planned Parenthood's in there. Oh, I'm sure. Or lifelike decapitated heads of babies and adults. What does the Breckenridge law decapitation? Yep. And the Noahide laws. Yeah. Abramovic's role extends far beyond evil dinner parties. Abramovic, now listen, tutored Lady Gaga. Gaga. Lady Gaga, also Jewish. Lady Gaga is Jewish. Wow. In performance art back in 2013. Thus making Gaga's flamboyant stage shows Satanatic by extension one performance art exercise in which Gaga was told to enter the woods, and Gaga, Lady Gaga will tell you this herself, enter the woods, strip, and then find her way home, is said to be suspiciously similar to CIA mind control exercises. Well, Gaga was out in the woods naked. There is no doubt that Marina Abramovic is a Satanist. Uh, below are examples of her spirit cooking, the food that makes her celebrity dinner parties. And let me name a few that were at her dinner parties. And Tommy, you can share these pictures if you want to. You don't have to, uh, you know, uh, or if we don't, that's no problem. Uh, celebrity Gwen Stefani is at Marina Abramovic's dinner. Uh, Deborah Harry, woo! Butchers, uh, butchers a model of herself. Uh, another another normal dinner party, uh, Hugh Jackman's there with a body dipped in blood. These are pictures of uh, uh, another party where a naked woman's laying in the center, not naked, with a dead skeleton, and they're eating around and eating a corpse for dinner or a, der a, 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 a derby. Now, educating for ca cannibalism. Let's report Clinton linked to satanic rituals involving kidnapped children and Marina Abramovic. Kidnap children, remember? Mm -hmm. Child molestation, child trafficking. The GOP's decision to crown the birther king as its standard at standard bearer was an unprecedented triumph for the far-right fever swamp. This is in the New York Intelligencer, November 4th, 2016. The media personalities who populate the infotainment complex with an unprecedented challenge in a world where the Republican nominee raves about elections rigged by international bankers calls for his political rivals imprisonment in between joking about her assassination and insinuates that Barack Obama is in, cohort, in cohorts with ISIS. How precisely is an infra war supposed to retain his outsider's edge? Clinton linked to satanic rituals involving kidnapped children and Marina Abamovic. Another picture of Lady Gaga uh, with blood around her mouth and face. That's sick. Yep. 
uh, another satanic democracy. Then we have the Rothschilds mask ball, Tommy, the ball of the Rothschilds. And this was in 1972 where they had dismembered babies and severed heads laid on their tables, Tommy. Sounds like something you'd want to eat with. Uh, now, these are plastic, of course. Amen. And then uh, Baron Guy, they, they Rothschild, and how the Jewish elite amuse themselves. So I could go on and on, but there's a lot uh, goes back to the synagogue of Satan, Tommy. Yes. Amen. I'm going to end it there. Now, listen, we know that this might be a lot for retain. It might have blew your mind if you're uh, what they call a snowflake and you can't handle information or truth. Your mind's just going boom. But these are facts and they're true and they're happening around us. Now, we want you, if you would accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, amen, to the Father, amen? Yes. We can't force you. We can't make you. We can't strangle you, but out of love, even these Satanatic cabal, uh, Kabbalists to accept Jesus as their Savior, amen? Not mankind, not the Antichrist, uh, lovingly and kindly. Uh, we're here to say, let no man deceive you by any mean. Let no man deceive you by any means. Yes. Amen. That's it, Tommy. I have a ton more, but I think that's a uh, lot to talk about. We hope you have a lot of comments down below, too. And if you've ever been to one of these dinners and you would like to give your testimonial, please do. Tell us how great the flesh tasted or the blood boring out. You know, give us some insight if you've been there. Uh, were you grossed out about it? You know, give us some insight on that, Tommy. Amen. Yeah. Um, now, I do want to kind of get back into the talking about the Khazarian Empire a little bit. Now, during the uh, eighth, ninth, and tenth century, they were, well, be, in, in the eighth century, early eighth century, they were pagans and they were wanting to convert to a different religion and they actually had a christian a jew and a muslim all three together and the 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 king of the uh, Khazarian empire was asking about their religions well he ended up picking judaism and he left paganism and picked judaism but he he brought over into judaism uh the babylonian talmud now the the babylonian talmud was already in place in i believe the fourth century um but he was picking up stuff and learning from the babylonian talmud from the jews at that time well then the khazarian empire was very rich and powerful and a lot of uh, people over in europe at that time anytime they had quarrel with another country they would even go to khazar and ask for help and a lot a lot of money was loaned and a lot of uh, soldiers were loaned kind of sounds like the federal reserve bank a little bit but anyway um one thing that they did was they promoted pedophilia, homosexual uh, activities, prostitution. Um, they basically sold sin. And the, the way Hollywood got started up was, was very, very similar to, to what Kazar was doing back in, during the Dark Ages. Um, that's why the Jews run Hollywood. They run um, most of the banks in the world. They're the richest people in the world. And um, they're promoting the same thing. I mean, you can't even watch a, a something on Nickelodeon without something, you know, with the horrible agenda being promoted. I mean, it, it's just it's everywhere. But um, yeah, anyways, go through this book, The 13th Tribe. Very, very interesting. I will put a PDF of it in the description below. Um, also, you can even Google and I'll even do it right now to show you so like the history of Kazar and you should be able to pull up a pdf or pull up wikipedia and this goes over a lot about it and some of it will be what i just talked about um now they do they do claim that whoever believes that the ashkenazi jew came from Khazar, they call them um, uh, white supremacists and uh, racists and all that. So they use they use those slurs as a scare tactic to keep people from talking about it. So don't fall into that trap of being called an anti-Semite because that term actually, it, it doesn't even exist because they're not Semitic. So 
I mean, they're just using it to try to, to shame you into being a truth teller. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, Randy, you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I'm just looking up some. Go ahead. Tom. Okay, I'll go ahead and read uh, about this on Wikipedia until Randy finds that. But this says the Khazars were a semi-nomadic Turkish people that in the late 6th century AD established a major commercial empire covering the southeastern section of modern European Russia, southern Ukraine, Crimea, and Kazakhstan. They created what is uh, what uh, for its duration was the most powerful polity to emerge from the breakup of the Western Turkic uh, cognate, astride a major artery of commerce between Eastern Europe and Southwestern Asia, Khazaria became one of the foremost trading empires of the early medieval world, commanding the Western marches of the Silk Road and playing a key commercial role as a crossroad between China, the Middle East, and Kyivan Rus. For some three centuries, 650 to 965, the Khazars dominated the vast area extending from the Volga Don steeps to the eastern Crimea and the northern Caucasus. So uh, and then Khazari long served as a buffer state between the Byzantine Empire and both the nomads of the northern steeps and the Umayyad um Caliphate and Ab Abbasid Caliphate after serving as the Byzantine Empire proxy against the uh, Sassian Empire, the alliance was dropped around 900. Byzantium began to encourage the Alans to attack Khazaria and to weaken its hold on Crimea and the Caucasus, or Caucasus and sought to obtain an uh, entente with the rising Rus power to the north, which it aspired to convert to Christianity. Between 965 and 969, the, the Kevian Rus ruler, uh, whatever that name is, as well as his allies, conquered the capital until and ended Khazaria's independence. The state became an, an autonomous entity of Rus and then of Khazar, forming provinces, uh, Khwarezm, in which Khazars were known as Turks, just as Hungarians were known as Turks in Byzantium in Volga, Bulgaria. Determining the origins and nature of the Khazars is closely bound with theories of their languages, but it is a matter of intricate difficulty since no indigenous uh, records of the Khazar language survive, and the state was polyglot and uh, polyethnic. The native religion of Khazars is thought to have been uh, Tengrism, like that of North uh, Caucasian Huns and other Turkic people, the polyethnic populace and the Khazar cognate uh, appears to have been a multi-confessional mosaic of pagan, Tengris, Jewish, Christian, and Muslim worshippers. Some of the Khazars joined the ancient Hungarians in the 9th century. The ruling elite of the Khazars was said by Judah uh, Halavi, and Abraham Ibnadad uh, have to have converted to rabbinic Judaism in the eighth century, which is just what I said earlier. But the scope of the conversion to Judaism with the Khazars can that remains uncertain. Uh, I'll go ahead and stop there because I think Randy does have. No, uh, you're okay. Okay, let's just stop. There. Uh, I'm finished, Tommy. Okay, I will read one more. Uh, I'll read this last paragraph and then we'll be done. Where the Khazars disperse after the fall of the empire is subject to many conjectures. Proposals have been made regarding the possibility of a Khazar factor of the ethnogenous of numerous peoples, such as the uh, Hazaras, the Hungarians, uh, Kazakhs, uh, the uh, Cossacks of the Don, uh, region of the Ukraine, uh, Belkaran Jews, and Muslim uh, Kumgeks, whatever that word is, the Turkic speaking uh, Krimchaks and their Crimean neighbors, the Crimean Karaites, the Moldavian, whatever that word is, the Mountain Jews, even some Sub Subotniks, on the basis of their Ukrainian and Cossacks origin and others. The late 19th century saw the emergence of the theory that the core of today's Ashkenazi Jews are descended from a hypo... Uh, hypo uh, can't even say it right now hypothetical 
uh, Khazarian Jewish diaspora, which migrated westward from modern day Russia and Ukraine into modern day France and Germany. Ling linguists and genetic studies have su not supported the theory of a Khazar connection to Ashkenazi Jewry. This theory still finds occasional support, but most scholars view it as considerable skepticism. Uh, the theory is, some, is sometimes associated with anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism. So now this last couple sentences, I completely disagree with. And the reason why is because I just told you, once you start to, to um, compare the Ashkenazi Jew to the Khazars, they get really defensive. They try to claim that they do not come from the land of Khazar, but they do all agree that the Khazarian empire was bad. But they're doing the same thing that the Khazarian Empire did in that time. Pretty interesting. But then they want to say that whoever supports this idea is anti-Semitic and anti-Zionist. So uh, it's almost like if you don't believe in Black Lives Matter, you're racist. Amen. You know what? You, you, yeah, I'm done. Go ahead. Right. Uh, another thing is salvation of the Jews, Tommy, in the Bible. And we might want to pull up some scripture here. The King James Version of the Bible, as well as many other versions, translate John 4.22, Tommy. Um, we might want to look at that real closely, you know, and John 4.22, and if you want to read it, Tommy. John chapter 4, verse 22. You worship, you know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. And Jesus was talking to the woman at the well, right? Yes. Is salvation of the Jews, does that does that make sense, Tommy? Well, let's let's look at this a little closer. Mm -hmm. You worship, know not what, but we know what we worship, so salvation is of the Jews. That word Jews in there. Let's look at that. Is salvation of the Jews? As the King James Bible translate John 4, 22, the pre- position of the Greek are far more specific than in the English. The Greek word used here is ek, 1537, you might, which means origin. Every time this Greek word ek, E-K, is used in the Bible, it is translated out of, except in John 4.22. So because Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, and because he identifies himself as a savior of all mankind. Let's look at that. First John, first uh, Timothy 4.10. A savior of all mankind. Amen. First, first Timothy 4.10. I'll let you read it, Tommy. For therefore, we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God, who is the savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Amen. That the phrase should be translated in John 4, 22, we're going back to that scripture. Salvation is out of Judea. If you have 1 Timothy 4, 10, because salvation is a savior of all mankind, right? Mm -hmm. Not Jew. That's a mistranslation in the Bible. The last word is Judea, not Jew. So let's reread this. Salvation is, is found only in Jesus who was born or came out of Judea. Not salvation is of the Jews. He came out of Judea. Mm -hmm. Amen. The Bible is all about Jesus, not about Israel or the Jews. <laughs> Matthew 2, 6 says, And thus Bethlehem in the land of Judea art not, art not the least among the princes of Judea, for out of, Ek 1537, they, these shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel, Matthew 2, 6. Micah 5, 2. Well, uh, let's go to Hebrews 7, 14. You know, we're just using scripture here. Mm -hmm. We're not putting an interpretation on the scripture. Hebrews 7, 14, you want to read it, Tommy? For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Mm. For it is manifest that out of, Act 1537, Judea has sprung our Lord. Thus the proper translation of John 422, again, as follows. Ye worship, ye know not what, we know what we worship, for salvation is out of Judea. Not of the Jews. Mm -hmm. Out of Judea. Meaning that salvation is of Jesus Christ, who was born in Bethlehem of Judea. Now, here's another one. Jesus never identified himself as a Jew. Wow. 
In fact, there was no such thing as Jew during the time of Jesus. The Israelites were worshipers of the God whose presence resided in the temple in Jerusalem in Judea, and as they were called Judeans or Judaites, but never Jews. Jesus was always at odds with the Pharisees, the counterfeit leaders of the organized church of the day. Jesus was taunted, baited, and hated by the Pharisees because he taught a totally different religion. From what the Pharisees possessed, Christ's message was the antithesis of that day's pharisaical religion. Jesus never identified himself with the Pharisees. He always referred to them as separate from him. John 7, 1 says, And these things Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry or Judea, because the Jews or Judeans sought to kill him. <laughs> Luke eleven forty seven and 48, Woe unto you, for you blind the sulfurcus of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. John 6, 58, I am the bread which came down from heaven. Your fathers ate manna and are dead. John 8, 56, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Mark 7, 9, and he said unto them, full well, you reject the commandments of God that you may keep your own traditions. They're still doing the false synagogue of Satan. Jew is doing that today. Mm -hmm. Matthew 15, 3 and 6, why do you also contrast, uh, transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Thus you have made the commandment of God of none effect by your traditions. The designation of Judea or, or Judean or Judaite incorrectly, incorrectly shortened to Jew was not a genetic designation. It was a spiritual designation, and it designated a worshiper of Jehovah, the true God. Jesus was the antithesis of everything pharisaical or Jewish. Wow. Jesus was not definitely, let me repeat this, Jesus was definitely not a Jew. From your Bible. Amen. I'm going to end it there. Well, we can go on and on. And Abraham wasn't a Jew either. Yeah. He came out of Babylon. Right. He was and Chaldean. Was God a Jew in heaven? Did no. Did God have a son in heaven? Was he a Jew in heaven? Uh, he had a son in heaven, yes, but no, he was not a Jew. No. Was Adam and Eve a Jew? No. Was Noah a Jew? Mm -mm. Where did, and we know where that comes from, but it's demonic. Okay. I'm done, Tommy. God bless. Yep. Amen. Yep. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Take care and God bless.